again everyone, this is John with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about creatine. Um, we're doing this video because we did one in the past. And since we made it, you know, we kind of summarized, gave you the Cliffs Notes, but we get a lot of questions on creatine. There's a lot of myths out there, uh, a lot of novel forms of it. So I just want to go through, dispel some of those myths and answer your guys' questions on it. Um, just to give you a little background, creatine has been on the market in terms of a supplement form since about 1992. It's the most researched, you know, supplement on the market in terms of uh, performance enhancing benefits. So uh, that's one thing creatine has going for it. Um, again, we're going to go through them and answer these questions for you guys. So um, one question we get is, you know, where is creatine made and is it made in the body? Yes, it is made in the body. It's made endogenously, um, specifically in the liver, kidneys, and a little bit is made in the pancreas. Um, it's made from three amino acids along with some help from some enzymes in your body. And on average, you know, most people, it's going to be about one gram per day is about what people make. Now, obviously, there's some variance in there based on the size of the individual. Um, other questions we get is, where is creatine stored? Again, it's going to be stored mainly in muscle tissue, about 95% of it. Um, other areas you're going to find is in the brain, liver, kidneys, um, and in the testes, oddly enough. Um, not oddly, I guess, but that's just a place where it's stored. Such a child, aren't I? Um, sources? Um, and, and how does that pertain to your diet? Well, the thing is, is, if you're a vegetarian, you're likely not going to get much in your diet because one of the main sources of it is going to be red meat. So, and on average, again, this is going to vary, and it's, it's, that's one of the problems, you guys, with like diet studies sometimes, is observational epidemiology. Kind of, it leaves open a lot of variance, and you're relying sometimes, if the studies aren't well controlled, on people telling you exactly what they're eating. But on average, we're talking about a gram per day from diet, um, and that would be from non-vegetarians. Um, what else we get? Well, why use it? You know, what do the ingredients do? Does the evidence there? Well, specifically what we do know is that creatine is going to improve performance. It's going to increase muscle, muscle strength, uh, which could lead stronger muscle than equates to a bigger muscle if you stress it properly. Um, you're going to have decreased recovery time, so you're going to recover better. And there's also some evidence that shows that it helps with neurological function. So uh, more and more things are coming out all the time. And the great thing, like I said, is we have a lot of evidence back in Crete. And so we could say pretty confidently, you know, what it does through date. Um, how does it work? Well, you know, it's not fully understood. Um, in general, we know that it does work with anaerobic metabolism in the sense that when you do something explosive like a lift or a sprint, your aerobic system is not fast enough for those reactions. So you use the anaerobic system and you use cellular energy called ATP, and it's a very fast reaction. And what happens is uh, a phosphate drops off of ATP during the reaction creatine can return the phosphate. It can turn ADP, and adenosine diphosphate, back into ATP and adenosine triphosphate. So that's how creatine is working. It's going to make you more explosive. It's going to make you stronger as a result. Um, beyond that, we don't know all the mechanisms, you know, down to the nitty gritty, but generally we know that that's how it works. Um, you know, other effects that can have, it can hyperhydrate your muscle cells. Just means you draw some water into your muscle cells. And we'll get to some of the myths that come along with that here a little later, because we do have some questions on that too. Now, Another question we get is, does the form of creatine matter? Well, the reality is, is that the vast majority of research has been done on creatine monohydrate. Um, this is an example of one. The really nice thing about creatine monohydrate is it's cheap and it's the most researched. And we know that it's the one that works. Now, does that mean that the other forms don't work? No. Um, all that they can say is maybe at best it works as good as creatine monohydrate based on evidence. But when you look into those forms and they tell you, hey, 750 milligrams a day, I look at that with a, with a raised eyebrow because they don't have research to demonstrate that. So we'll get into dosing, but that, that is not going to help anybody because they're basing it on, you know, pie in the sky. And also those tend to cost more. So our advice is to stick with creatine monohydrate. Um, specifically what you want to look for, um, if you want to be real technical, is creapure. Um, not to say that other ones that are not creapure are not effective. It's just that Creapure is a company that makes it from Germany. It's tested, it's patented, so you know that's going to be your safest bet if you want to be really technical. I know everybody's always after the next novel, you know, sexy form of creatine, if you will, but creatine monohydrate works, and that's what we know works based on evidence. Um, so hopefully, we could save some money, um, and we can go into some of the details too about these other forms too, because I do have some specific questions here from you guys on it. Um, another question we get is: Can creatine be taken with other stuff? Yes. Um, there doesn't seem to be any contraindications with creatine in terms of it having antagonistic effects on other things. So if you're otherwise healthy, there should be no issue. You know, the whole thing with 
creatine and caffeine, you can't take it together. That's a myth. There's a poorly designed study and it's been disproven since. Um, who can take creatine? Well, again, if you're otherwise healthy, you could take creatine. Technically, we, we like to recommend that you're at least 18 years old. And not that it would be so bad for you if you were younger and you took it. It's more that you, know, you haven't maximized what you can do without supplements at that point. And also, there's some other factors that weigh into whether or not you're going to respond to creatine. Because we know about 20 to 30 percent of the population are non-responders to creatine. And what's going to determine that is these, these characteristics have been outlined by research of people who do respond to creatine. Number one, they tend to have a lower initial quantity of intramuscular creatine, so then they were able to absorb it through supplementation. So that just makes sense. If you supplemented it and you took your levels up higher from where they were initially, if you started at a lower baseline, it makes sense that you're going to feel it more because you started with less. Um, two, you tend to have a, a greater percentage of fast twitch, you know, the explosive muscle fibers. So, you know, a marathon runner, for instance, may not feel creatine as well because they might have a little bit of trouble increasing their levels. Now, they're going to. Everybody we know through supplementation they increase those levels, but the question is do they reach that critical mass to where they get the benefits from it? Um, so having more fast twitch muscle fibers, number two. Three, uh, a greater fiber, fiber cross-sectional area has to do with your muscle tissue. Um, four, possess more fat-free mass. So in general, the more muscular you are, the more you're going to benefit from creatine. So if you're somebody who's taking it, like, you know, I really didn't feel it, things didn't happen, I didn't gain strength, um, even if that's anecdotal, um, give it time. Maybe try and do some other things, build some more muscle, and then try it again. Come back to it. Um, that would be my advice. You know, you're not forever a, a non-responder. Um, other questions we get is, can I benefit from it from aerobic exercise? Yes and no. Most of the research shows that once you exceed 150 seconds of exercise, um, the effects start to wane, they start to diminish because then you're starting to get into other energy systems that are not requiring you know, recycling of ATP very fast. So I'm um, actually a gentleman post something where he said he would assume that creatine would help um, aerobic athletes, specifically marathon runners, because of the hyperhydration of muscle cells. And you know, I know it, it won't actually is what it comes down to because that's assuming that hydration is the rate limiting factor for somebody to be able to run their best marathon time. The problem is you're going to weigh a little bit more because you're going to gain a little bit of weight. And I got a feeling that's going to put a little bit more stress on you. It's like throwing on a, a 10 pound backpack or 5 pound backpack, depending upon how much weight you gain from it at the beginning of your race. Well, you sweat it all out. Okay, but at some point of that race, you had that extra weight, which in theory could slow you down. So there's just not evidence to demonstrate that. Um, if hydration were a rate limiting factor, maybe that would be the case. Even then, I would question it. Um, other questions we get are about side effects. Um, you know, again, it's completely safe from what we know. Research has shown that. Um, assuming you're otherwise healthy, there's not really going to be any issues. Um, now, one thing to consider is, and a question we get is, well, what about my natural production, my endogenous production of creatine? Yes, that will come down when you supplement creatine. We know that. Um, but it's not like it doesn't come back. It does come back. We know it does. It's not like uh, taking steroids year over year and you know, people are constantly on them and then all of a sudden they have low testosterone because of the down regulation and they're not able to bounce back. With creatine, we don't see those effects. Now, that being said, we do recommend about 12 weeks is what we recommend for the psychological benefit. Go on for about 12 weeks. Give yourself you know, four to six weeks off at, at least just to kind of give your mind a break, so to speak. So when you go back on creatine, and you get that benefit of jumping back on it, you know, you feel full again and things like that. Um, now, that's somewhat anecdotal, but it's also based on you know, those endogenous levels coming down via down regulation. So that would be our recommendation. Um, when to take it. Now, here's the thing. Timing, it's, it's not entirely essential. It's more about how much you take. Now, in general, um, if you load on creatine, let's say for the three to five days, first three to five days, you take about 15 to 20 grams a day. Varies a little bit by body weight, and you take that in separate dosages. That's going to lead to you saturating your muscle tissue faster. Do you have to load? No, you don't. You can simply go to the maintenance dose from the start, and for most people, that's going to be about five grams per day. Again, it's going to vary a little bit by body weight. So three to five grams, I guess, would be a good range to say. So if you get in that range and you're taking creatine every day from the start, three to five grams, you're going to feel it. It's just going to take a little bit longer to saturate your muscles. So you may want to load with it so you can start to realize the effects of it faster. And again, that's about 15 to 20 grams for the first three to five days. Um, in terms of your maintenance dose, the other question is when should I take it post-workout? You know, we tend to recommend that just because it keeps you consistent. On your non-training days, just take it in the morning. Now, another question that comes up is, you know, what should I take it with? Should I take it with grape juice or blah, blah, blah? No, you don't have to. Um, 
In fact, there's a study that shows that it does increase creatine retention to take um, creatine with insulogenic compounds. That could be carbohydrates, you know, simple carbs, any, any carb basically, and proteins. Proteins do elevate insulin levels, contrary to popular belief, especially whey protein. It's actually quite insulogenic. And upon co-administration of insulogenic uh, nutrients, um, they pretty much found from, now these are in vitro studies, uh, shown that insulin has no direct effect on muscle creatine uptake. Um, unless we're talking about like super, super high doses. Um, so we don't fully understand the way creatine is transported at this point in terms of science. There's some theories out there and it's being researched. So you don't have to take it with carbs or protein, you know. Um, generally though, like I said, we do, it's not going to hurt you to do it that way. So it's not really, it doesn't make that much of a difference, in other words, if you mix it in water. Um, which brings us to myths. Now, there's some myths out there that, for instance, the creatine caffeine one we already went through, that's been debunked. Um, another myth is that creatine uh, is easily degraded. It's not very stable due to the pH in your stomach. That's nonsense. It's nothing more than nonsense to sell some novel form of creatine, um, specifically crealkaline, which is creatine in baking soda. It's based on a pH theory that creatine, it starts off from the standpoint of, hey, creatine is not stable, specifically creatine monohydrate. So we have to put in these buffers and so on and so forth to make it work. Here's the reality. At 25 hours in solution with a pH of only one, uh, very acidic, only 2% of creatine would have degraded into its dehydration product, creatinine, which is a byproduct of creatine, okay? And it's, it's completely, completely exaggerated. So 25 hours sitting in a very acidic solution, we're talking 1% to 2%. Now, that's not, that, that doesn't qualify as unstable to me. Um, I don't know about anybody else, so that's nonsense. Um, other things is I have to make sure my creatine is completely mixed up before I can drink it. You know, the, the solubility of creatine in water, here you go, at 68 degrees is about 40, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, I should be clear, um, is 14 grams per liter at a neutral pH of 7. So we're talking about a lower pH and higher temperatures in your stomach. Don't buy that notion. Make sure you, you know, stir it up, mix it good. I don't buy this notion that somehow your body can't absorb it. Um, you know, if it makes you feel better to see it all disappear or most of it, that's okay. But the evidence is lacking to show that, oh, that, that must be how it's done, otherwise your body's not going to absorb it. It's, it's just not um, there. So that's another one. Another one is, uh, will creatine destroy my kidneys? Um, that's a common one. There's a lot of old wives' tales and myths out there. Well, that's because when you go to get your blood work done, one of the markers that they test for for kidney function is creatinine levels, specifically plasma creatinine levels. That does elevate when you're on creatine. However, they've done studies that follow up to see if we get cre good creatinine clearance in the urine. Um, via GFR. They want to make sure that your kidneys are going to be able to um, handle it. And yes, we have found that that's the case. There's not extra stress on the kidneys. They're able to handle it just fine. Now, something to consider is that usually your creatinine, creatinine level clearance is going to be pretty equivalent between plasma and urine. But when you take creatine and you supplement, you're taking in more, and there's evidence that shows that your kidneys actually recycle it, just like it would any other solutes. Um, you know, if, you're, if you notice when you're not very well hydrated, your urine volume goes down, it's darker in color. Well, that's because your, your, your kidney's job is basically to take waste product solutes and put it into a very concentrated form so as to reabsorb what you don't need and not get rid of extra water. Um, so basically, long and short of it, your kidneys uh, are going to be able to recycle it and there's no added stress. So if you're otherwise healthy, you don't have a pre-existing pre -existing condition, your kidneys aren't going to liquefy. Um, on the other video, we, we, you know, it, almost bi-weekly, I would say, we get an idiot who posts something stupid and uninformed on there about how you know, creatine liquefies your kidneys or, or something stupid that doesn't make any sense. So it's nonsense. It's not true. Um, supplement companies, us, you know, plenty of other people don't have incentive for people to get their kidneys liquefied. It's not a good business model. Um, other things, well, I get bloated. Well, no. Now, it is true that creatine will hyperhydrate muscle cells, make you a little more full. It's drawing water into the cell. It's intracellular water. It's not like subcutaneous fluid beneath your skin from sodium. And even that is an acute reaction, which is easily balanced out. We have another video on the, the myth of sodium being so bad and, you know, constantly keeping it perpetually bloated. Your body wants to maintain homeostasis. There's ways to combat that. So it, it's just not true. And actually, there's plenty of people, we know, that have competed in, in bodybuilding shows and actually stay on creatine, and natural guys especially, um, because they, they like that feeling of, you know, being fuller, because a lot of guys, they do all this carb depleting, carb loading, and, um, you know, whether or not you have to do that is a, is a different uh, topic, but 
bottom line is it's not going to blow cheap. Stay full. I mean, I'm on creatine right now. Um, I, I, I think I'm pretty lean right now. I'm not really holding a lot of water under my skin. Um, you know, so I don't know. I guess if, if you want to judge for that, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to take my shirt off uh, here, but uh, there's plenty of videos out there where people do that. So uh, maybe one of these days. Um, do you lose all your muscle when you come off of creatine? No. That's silly. That's preposterous. If you continue to eat as you were before and all other things being equal, you're training hard and stuff, your body's not just going to all of a sudden say, hey, let me break down all this muscle that you were able to build. No, that's not going to happen. It's not true. Will you lose weight? Yes, likely, because some of the water is going to be drawn out. But the extra muscle tissue you were able to build and the performance enhancing benefits you get, they don't just go away you know, that you, you know, from building extra muscle. It just doesn't go away. Some of the performance enhancing benefits, I should say, may go down when you come off creatine, but you can always go back on. But while you were on it, those benefits would have led, hopefully, if you trained properly and dieted correctly, you build more muscle, which isn't just going to you know, melt away or disappear. Or what are the theories that are out there? It's going to morph into fat. That's another one that's, that it doesn't happen. That's not, it, it doesn't make any, any sense. Uh, will it dehydrate you? No, it will not dehydrate you. Because, well, I should drink X amount of water. Well, you should always drink plenty of water. Um, you know, a good way is to kind of read your pee, is kind of the way we would say it, is if your pee is clear to a light yellow, that means you're pretty hydrated. Um, if you're in, in volume of urine matters too. So if you're on some of these multivitamins, you know, you're going you're gonna to be pissing green, which, you know, may be more telling about your multivitamin. You might want to uh, switch that up. But that's something else to consider. Um, so the bottom line is, guys, go with creatine monohydrate um, in general. Now, whether it's with other things in it, um, you know, so sometimes they add the protein powders, and look for a dose of about 3 to 5 grams. Um, ideally, Crea Pure. Um, if you want to load on it, load on it for three to five days. First three to five days, take 15 to 20 grams. It's cheap. It's not like it's going to break the bank. If you do that, that'll speed up your saturation. You'll start to realize the effects faster. From there, do a maintenance dose, dose of three to five grams per day. You could do it on an empty stomach in water. That's fine. Um, there's some evidence that shows that it's actually better. Um, or you could do it with food. Um, I wouldn't do it with a huge meal because there's some evidence that shows that's not the best, but you'll still absorb it. It's not like you won't. Um, but if it's just convenient for you to throw it in your post-workout shake, if that's what you do after you work out, that's fine. Um, so that's generally the conclusions we can draw. You know, a lot of these things, when we talk about them, there's not a one-size-fits-all answer. You know, we get questions, hey, if I take this weight counter, will I gain weight? Well, I can't just answer that without knowing, you know, how many calories you're taking in otherwise, what else are you doing in terms of activity. So anyone who tells you that there's this one-size-fits-all answer and that we're all going to react the same to everything, uh, we know that based on research, it's not the case. We're, you know, we're, we're biological organisms. We have different hormones. Um, the way we apportion fuel, uh, aka food, is going to be different. You know, we're all not going to look the same, obviously. So, um, that being said, I hope I was able to answer these questions for you guys. Again, they come up time and time again on our other creatine videos. So, I hope I was able to knock them all out. I really hope I didn't forget any because we answered a lot of those questions. Um, if you do have others, though, please don't hesitate to post them. Happy to answer them. Uh, just post them in the comments section. Also, you can check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. Thanks for watching.